Good afternoon. The National Assembly of Wales is now in session, and the first item this afternoon questions the First Minister. Question one, Lynn Eagle. What discussions has the First Minister had with the UK Government regarding the impact of welfare reform on Wales? Well, Welsh Ministers have a regular contact with UK Ministers on the welfare reform agenda, agenda and the impacts for people in Wales. Welsh Government officials work closely with officials from the Department for Work and Pensions on the welfare benefit changes as they are implemented across Wales in order to protect Welsh people from them. Last week, the Court of Appeal ruled that the UK Government's bedroom tax amounted to unlawful discrimination following two cases, including one brought by a family from Wales with a disabled child. The UK Government now plans to take this matter to the Supreme Court, a decision that has been met with condemnation and disbelief. Will you raise this matter with the UK Government on behalf of all those affected in Wales by this spiteful policy? And would you agree with me that if this Tory Government had one shred of decency, they would abandon this appeal and stop persecuting disabled children and their families and all vulnerable people. Absolutely. I can assure the member that I have written today to the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, uh, calling on him to abandon any appeal and calling on him to uh, ensure that there is no discrimination against uh, those who were part of uh, the court case last week, those who have been the victims of domestic violence and those, in fact, caring for disabled uh, children. Unfortunately, uh, the UK government has taken the view that it wants to appeal. It has admitted discrimination against disabled children, and yet now it wants to appeal to the Supreme Court. I'm afraid it's a sign of a government that is a bad loser with no conscience. Mark Isherwood. Thank you. Well, the Public Policy Institute for Wales report on the impact of welfare forms for housing, as I'm sure you know, identifies a lack of appropriate homes for tenants to be able to downsize to. Um, why, given that um, ho Homes for All, why, given that Homes for All Cymru warned Welsh government a decade before the removal of spare room subsidy of a housing crisis, and the UK government announced guidance on the removal of spare room subsidy two years before it went. Did Welsh Government cut the supply of new social housing by 70% and fail to invest in smaller homes until after the changes had come into effect? He stands there and defends discrimination against disabled children. He fails to condemn his own party for what it has done to the parents of a child who is disabled and others. He fails to explain why it is that those who are victims of domestic violence should be penalised financially by his party yeah. and tries to shift the blame onto us as a government. It was his party who introduced yeah. this policy in the first place, his party who launched their own little private war against disabled children, his party who discriminated against those who are the victims yeah. of domestic violence, and his party who must explain to the people of Wales and the people of Britain why it is that they now want to put those people through even more pain by appealing to the Supreme Court rather than accepting defeat, as any party with any conscience would do. Yeah. Alan Fred Jones. Yeah. Uh, well, Ran or on Dechon, you are hot, Pobol Cymru. A dear to what drives Cymru with the Gwynedum Hwili Vesir Effaith and Evidiate Hin Aragvindrem Les. A cos felly a'r dadansoddiad ar dystiolaeth ar gael ar lefel sirol neu etholithol. Well, if Mr. Degau uh, yn cael ei uh, gynnal gan yr adran uh, gwaith a phensiynau, uh -huh. uh, dyn nhw ddim yn torri ffigurau lawr er mwyn bod ni'n gwybod yr enghraifft beth yw'r sefyllfa uh, lleol a hefyd y sefyllfa ynglyn â faint sy'n mynd i gael ei effeithio ar ôl um, y dyfarniad um, wrthnos uh, dweitha. Ni yn gwybod uh, bod na uh, dai uh, now meal now can't with the scythe or bobol and hamrisi calia fithio uh, gan doriade and a be the daliad uh, and in good of course uh, but hon and best with fithio and uh, vaur arnin hu uh, a vesi uh, with the with the a reload and uh, gobot in anghatino and stuir uh, gidar fight when now or share a pelio and erbin devaniad uh, thesis of stwetha uh, agor of course and uh, para mlan uh, I rhedeg uh, y frwydr hyn yn erbyn bobl sydd yn edrych ar ôl uh, plant anabl. Gwenda Thomas. <coughs> no, fysa, my supplementary was going to be exactly along the lines of Lynn Eagles, and I very much appreciate the best response of our First Minister this afternoon. 
Well, I, I, I thank the member for that. It's a, it's a, it's a great shame that uh, on this issue, once again, the Welsh Conservatives simply sit there uh, and say nothing to defend disabled children and their carers and those who are the victims of domestic violence. Question two, Andrew Archie Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government economic support for South Wales Central? Yes, we're delivering a range of interventions that support jobs and growth across Wales, investing in infrastructure support uh, for business and skills. Uh, thank you for that answer, First Minister. One of the key planks, obviously, for South Wales Central is the city deal uh, that submissions have been made from Welsh Government and the local authorities. Uh, the Chancellor, in his speech to the Cardiff Business Club, indicated that he'd like to see a deal concluded by the March budget. Uh, are you able to update us as to the discussions that are ongoing around this issue? Because I'm sure not just myself as an elected member for South Wales Central, but all residents of South Wales Central would like to see this deal concluded uh, by that deadline that the Chancellor has set. There is no reason why a deal can't be concluded. We have put uh, 580 million pounds worth of money of new money on the table. Uh, the local authorities have made their commitments as well. Uh, we now await the response of the UK Treasury so that we can seal the deal. Jeff Cuthbert. Uh, this morning, First Minister, I chaired a seminar on apprenticeships in Wales where attendees were reminded that half the apprenticeships in Wales were delivered with the support of ESF monies, critical to boosting the economy in Wales and delivering on our skills agenda. First Minister, would you agree with me that ESF is currently vital to supporting the Welsh economy, that it's one of a number of indicators that demonstrate the importance of EU membership to Wales and that it can be used effectively to boost skill levels through programmes such as apprenticeships and working with employers, further education and learners to boost the economy of Wales. I very much agree with what the member has said. He will know, of course, of the fact that uh, European money has been used, for example, in Jobs with Wales. Uh, and we know that it's made a substantial contribution to the uh, opportunities uh, for young people of the length and breadth of this nation. Without that money, it's right to say, that training would not be available and those people would not have the skills and hope that they have now. Eleanor Parrott. Uh, George Flowers. First Minister, would you agree with me that one of the key things to ensure that the, the Welsh economy is um, secure in the future is to en enable our small businesses to grow and become the medium-sized businesses of the future um, and that there is therefore an opportunity in the redevelopment of the, the Welsh Development Bank to bring together both funding and support for small businesses into one place where small businesses can make use of it? Yes, there is certainly an attraction in the idea of making sure that there is a one-stop shop. I agree with that on that. Uh, and uh, we have worked very closely with organisations supporting small businesses to make sure that they are uh, supported. We know, for example, that the Small Business uh, Rate Relief Scheme has had a, an enormous positive impact on many businesses, particularly, but not exclusively, on those with a rateable value of under £6,000 a year. We now move to questions from the party leaders. And first this afternoon, Leader Applied Cymru, Leanne Wood. Uh, First Minister, last November I asked you about funding for child and adult mental health services. At that time I wanted assurances from you that funding for mental health services had not been cut. I received information from the health boards which shows that some health boards have cut both budgets and staff numbers between 2011-12 and 2014-15. Can you tell us, please, was this done with the approval of your government? No, but as uh, I explained to the Leader of Plaid Cymru uh, in November, uh, we ring fence money for mental health. We put extra money into child and adolescent mental health as well, and we expect the local health force to use that money for the purpose intended. Well, First Minister, there have been cuts, and the mental health measure, which was passed by this Assembly, supported by both of our parties, was meant to make sure that mental health services were not easy targets for cost-cutting. We know that the Audit Office back in 2011 said, uh, where well, they expressed concern, and they said that the arrangements to ring fence mental health funding have lacked clarity, cannot be easily monitored, and may not have been complied with. Are you concerned, First Minister, that you appear to be in charge of a government that doesn't know what its health boards have been doing and whether or not they have been complying with the spirit of your government's legislation? Uh, well, we know that the health boards have been complying with the uh, spirit of the legislation and the funding. I've spoken myself to practitioners who work in CAMS and they have been at pains to tell me uh, how much more money is now available to assist them. We know that demand has gone up uh, and... Uh, 
their experience is that um, the finance is increasing uh, and we see that across the whole of Wales. The investment that you've announced for mental health services is about reversing the cuts that you have previously made rather than about investing in and expanding services. First Minister, you have failed to protect mental health services, which means that children are waiting longer for treatment. And just as in the same way as that there are too many people waiting for some basic diagnostic tests, just in the same way as you've missed targets for cancer and uh, waiting times for treatment for some very serious diseases. They're way too long. Will you now accept, First Minister, are you now prepared to admit that you've got it badly wrong on health? Well, first of all, we protected uh, mental health spending. We increased it uh, for child and adolescent mental health services when the demand uh, was there. So we've made sure that is properly funded. We see diagnostic weights coming down. We see ambulance response rates improving. We see waiting times dropping. We see delayed transfers of care uh, dropping while they're going the other way in England. No, we have ensured uh, that health receives more money per head in Wales than is the case in England, more money by far per head on health and social services combined than uh, in England. Uh, and uh, we see now what's happening in England with social services and the collapse of social services there, which gives me no uh, particular pleasure to, uh, to say. But we have done right by uh, those, especially young people, uh, who are suffering from mental health issues, and the extra funding for CALMS shows that. Now move to the leader of the Welsh Democrat, Liberal Democrats, sorry, Kirsty Williams. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First Minister, new figures from the National House Building Council show the number of new homes registered in Wales fell last year by 2% compared to a 7% increase across the rest of the UK. Uh, which makes you feel worse, First Minister, being outdone by Scottish nationalists or by English Tories? Well, we know that uh, house building has uh, increased by 20% in, in um, just about a year in Wales. So we know that, that house building has increased tremendously. We have um, helped by Wales, which has been uh, hugely important in terms of allowing people to uh, buy their first homes. And of course, we are on target in terms of our uh, house building uh, for those who are renting in the public sector. First Minister, the number of new homes registered last year fell in Wales compared to increases, substantial increases, across the rest of the UK. Now, you know, we are used in Wales to sitting on NHS waiting lists, but could you tell me just how many thousands of Welsh people are on a waiting list for an affordable home? Well, let me tell the leader of the Liberal Democrats that there's been a long-term positive trend in Welsh house building. 20% more houses started in 2014 to 15 than the previous year. In addition, between July and September of 2015, a total of 1,736 new homes were completed, which is a 17% increase during the same quarter of 2014. We know that Help to Buy Wales is firmly established. We know that over 6,000 new homes will have been constructed by 2021, which has been widely welcomed by house builders. So we are on track when it comes to making sure that people have a roof over their heads. Uh, really, I guess that will be news to the 90,000 Welsh citizens who are languishing on an affordable housing waiting list. We have a housing crisis with people in Wales now having to borrow nearly four times their income if they want to buy a house, and many of our citizens can never aspire to that. Now, my party has plans to double the number of affordable homes and to introduce a rent-to-buy scheme that would allow people to make monthly payments equivalent to the rent to build up a share in their home without requiring a deposit. Will you look at these plans and take urgent action to address the aspirations of those 90,000 people who need an affordable home? Well, I mean, <laughs> what the Liberal Democrats have done is they've seen that we're on target of building 10,000 homes. They've come up with a figure to double it without explaining how they would pay for it. A lot of, a lot of a lame, I, I, I grant that, but let's see how that could be paid for. We have helped to buy Wales. It's not as if nothing has been done to help those in the private sector. We have been looking at schemes of shared equity, of community land trusts, which help to reduce the... Uh, uh, the cost of houses. All these uh, models are appropriate for the future. What we have not done is to abandon uh, the emphasis on building public housing as England is doing, forcing people to become owner-occupiers, whether they can afford it or not, or whether they like it or not. We appreciate there needs to be a mix in the Welsh housing market, and we have seen, as I've said, a 20% increase in new home uh, starts in 2014-15 compared, of course, with the previous year. And finally, the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Archie-Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, 
First Minister, the Anglesey Air Link uh, is an important investment that the Welsh Government have made over many years. Uh, considerable sums of money, about a million and a half a year is put into that project uh, by the Welsh Government. Uh, to say the last seven or eight months have been chaotic is most probably an understatement. Uh, with safety certificates being withdrawn, uh, air airlines uh, chartered on emergency basis. I even heard yesterday uh, how two seven-seater planes had to be chartered uh, to fulfil the route because there were more than seven people going up to Anglesey on that particular day. Uh, you've made that investment. As I said, the last seven months seem to be chaotic at best. Uh, I understand the route is out for tender. Can you update us exactly where the direction of travel is, excuse the pun, for the Welsh Government in the way, in the way you are managing this significant investment on behalf of the Welsh Government of a million and a half pounds? That he was at the airline uh, that was running the service uh, failed to obtain its safety certificate. As a result, uh, the service has been uh, taken over. There's been no disruption to passengers. Uh, and, of course, the service will then be, uh, be retended. It was uh, a matter that was outside of our control. The steps were taken to make sure that the service wasn't <laughs> disrupted. And it is a service much appreciated by many, including I know himself, because I've, I've seen him on the plane. I commend the service. I live very close to the airport, and uh, if I can get to Anglesey in 40 minutes, the point I'm making to you is it's an investment that you are putting in of a million and a half pounds, and to say the last seven, eight months has been chaotic, to say the least, is an understatement. If we move on to another project that the Welsh Government have invested in recently, the Ronda Life project, uh, which the Welsh Government put a million and this, one million six hundred thousand pounds into, uh, and the assets of Ronda Life were recently sold for two hundred and twenty thousand costing a loss to the taxpayer of in excess of a million pounds uh, can you indicate what level of support the Welsh Government were putting into that project that has left many people uh, disillusioned shall we say over the regeneration aims of that project because ultimately so much public money has been lost and there's a feeling within the Rhonda that the Welsh Government turned their back on the people who put themselves on the line for this particular project well, first of all, the Leader of the Opposition says that there was, there's been chaos with regard to the North-South service. There's been chaos at all. It's a lazy statement. And the service has operated as normal. As far as passengers are concerned, they've seen no difference whatsoever. It's far from chaos. Things have been running uh, smoothly, despite the difficulties that one airline had. When it comes to Ronda Life, uh, well, the, the member of the Ronda was uh, very uh, agitated and asked the question whether the Leader of the Opposition had actually been there. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Ron, the life had to be uh, managed uh, carefully, uh, and it is a project, uh, nevertheless, that uh, has uh, had an impact on the people who live in that part of the Ronda. You missed the complete uh, tone and direction of travel, which is the loss to the Welsh taxpayer of significant sums of money. And just to reassure the current, the current member for the Ronda, I've not only visited, I've also been engaged with the people who do feel they've been left high and dry, i.e. the people who put their heart and soul into this project. But I've just outlined two two very specific projects that the Welsh Government have managed or invested in. In respect of this second project, you've lost a considerable sum of Welsh taxpayers' money. In respect of the first project, there has been chaos at the heart of this. Do you think it's sensible to charter two seven-seater planes? Do you think it's sensible the website says no future bookings have been taken? Ultimately, this goes to the competence of the Welsh Government. Last week, you made an apology you made an apology because your government had lost tens of millions of pounds in relation to the Rifu land disposal. Now, we've had the apology. I've indicated at least two projects that you've lost considerable sums of money. What are you going to be doing? What further action will you be taking as First Minister to hold the people to account who presided over the Rifu disposal? And ultimately, what confidence can we have that this isn't just the final chapter, as your communities minister indicated last week when she addressed this issue. Yes, Minister. Well, I mean, first of all, uh, let's examine uh, what he wants to do. He wants to cut spending on the economy by 30%. Yeah. That's cutting spending on jobs, cutting spending on skills, cutting spending on supporting projects that have uh, created jobs the length and breadth of Wales. We took over the airport, an airport that his party wanted to abandon to closure. Yeah. From 2007 to 2013, the airport lost half its passengers under private ownership. It is now bouncing back. If he'd have had his way, that airport would be shut now and Bamsey would have gone with it. So that's the limit of ambition we see from the Tories. But he talks about competence. Let's just examine what his party has done in London, shall we? NHS reorganisation, £3 billion down the tubes. 
You wasted over a billion pounds firing and rehiring NHS staff. You lost one billion pounds on the Royal Mail sale, according to Westminster's Biz Committee. You lost 2.3 billion pounds as a result of your sell-off of Eurostar. You lost a billion pounds as a result of the sale of RBS shares. You lost 100 million pounds in one year, in one year on IT projects. Yes, there are issues, of course, that have to be dealt with with regards to Riffu, and they will be dealt with by way of a full response. But when it comes to wasting money, the Tories are the top of the class. <laughs> We now move back to question order. We now move back to questions on the paper, and question three is Mohammed Ashkar. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. What is the Welsh government doing to achieve greater equality in pupils in educational outcomes? to ensuring that all children and young people in Wales, regardless of their background or personal circumstances, reach their full potential in education and achieve the best possible outcomes. <coughs> Thank you, First Minister. Bullying in school is a particular risk for ethnic minority peoples and can seriously impact on their educational atta attainment level, levels. An Aston report in 2014 said that many schools' awareness and understanding of bullying and their policies and procedures for dealing with it were often found to be weak. What action has the Welsh Government taken to tackle bullying in schools since Aston report to promote greater equality in educational attainment? Well, we have, of course, moved forward with uh, what the Eston report uh, in, uh, indicated in uh, 2014. He has particularly mentioned minority ethnic uh, learners. He will be aware that uh, new grant arrangements were put in place in April of last year uh, in order to uh, assist minority ethnic uh, learners. And the Education Improvement Grant allows practitioners at a local level to decide best where and how to target funding to support those learners. Roger Dean Thomas. A prywyd ag un o'r pethau sy wedi bod yn poeni nifer ohono ni a ersefydlu y cynulliad mewn gwirionedd ydy fod plant mewn gofal yn methu a achyredd y safonau am y plant sydd y tu allan y system gofal yn eu cyrredd. Ydych chi'n teimlo fod na welliant wedi wneud o ran hynny yn ystod y ddwy fyna yr bymtheg diwethaf? O du, ond mae yna fwy o ffordd i fyn i'n deall hynny. Un o beth yn nes i sôn amdano um, yn ôl y 2010, uh, oedd uh, y broblem oedd yna er mwyn sicrhau bod potensial plant sydd uh, mewn gofal yn, yn um, uh, cael ei, ei gefnogi. Na, wrth gwrs, ni wedi uh, uh, cynhyrchu strategaeth, uh, wrth os diwethaf yna fel yr ugen o misiwnar ynglyn a uh, helpu uh, plant uh, mewn gofal a'i uh, chael geisio a hefyd sy'n cynhau bod yn wneud yn well yn yr ysgol a bydd y strategaeth hyn yn gyrru gwelliannau uh, ynglyn a uh, dyfodol um, uh, y plant hyn. Alan Roberts? Diolch llywydd. Uh, Prif wneud o'r dwi'n siŵr chi'n cytuno fy fi bod y grant amddifadiad erbyn hyn yn dechrau dangos bod na fodd i ni gair bwlch o ran cyrhaeddiad uh, rhwng plant uh, difreint tiedig. Um, Dych chi wedi cyfeirio at y datganiad wyth rhwng stwetha ynglyn â plant mewn gofal, ond i'r ond y ffigurau sydd yn uh, achosi pryder ar hyn o bryd ydy'r ffigurau ynghylch cyrhaeddiad plant uh, o deuluoedd teithwyr a sipsiwn. Um, os gennych chi fel llywodraeth felly unrhyw fwriad i edrych ar y problem uh, parhaol o ran cyrhaeddiad y plant yna wrth gofio wrth gwrs bod y grant unigol ar gyfer uh, y grŵp yna wedi cael i, I, I gyflwyno erbyn hyn o ran uh, grant cyffredinol i ysgolion. Mae grant uh, gwelliad nes i sôn amdano uh, myned yn ôl mwy na, wrth yn rhywbeth sydd ag gael i blant o gefndir um, teithio. A, a hefyd, mae yna nodau ar gael uh, i gefnogi uh, rhyna sydd yn dod o'r cefndir yna yn yr ysgol. Uh, mae hwnna wedi bod ar gael ers mis mawrth 2014, so mae yna um, ar nodau ar gael i ysgolion, uh, a mae ma arian ar gael hefyd, wrth gwrs, er mwyn helpu nhw uh, i lwyddo yn y penrhaw. Cwestiwn ffôr, Rhyn Abiowen. A na eith y prif yn ei dog roi'r wybodaeth ddiwedd araf am gynllun cyflymu Cymru. Mae 150 miliwn wedi cael i fydsoddi lan i nawr. Uh, wedi sicrhau bod 100 miliwn o, o dai a busnesau ar draws Cymru uh, wedi cael uh, mynediad uh, i'r band uh, eang. A'n un uh, parhau i arwain y ffordd ynglyn a uh, band eang uh, o genedlaeth o uh, wledydd prydau. Um, 
Man a lawer o'r rwystredigaeth yn y nesolaeth i fel dwi'n siŵr ym mhob uh, etholaeth gan yr heini sydd ddim eto wedi cael eu cysylltu uh, gan yr rhaglen cyflymu Cymru ar wrth gwrs, mae'n rhaid cydnabod bod na dros flwyddyn ar ôl i redeg ar yr rhaglen. Uh, ar ddiwedd yr rhaglen, wrth gwrs, dan ni'n disgwyl y bydd pedwar y cant o bob uh, tŷ, bob busnes, ddim wedi cael eu cysylltu. Rwy'n mi o fynnau si i'r dirprwy wneud o'r dros gilio'r technoleg yn mis medi be oedd y llywodraeth am allu wneud I geisio adnabod yr heini sydd ddim yn mynd i gael eu cysylltu cyn diwedd yr rhaglen, er mwyn gallu dechrau chwilio am ffyrdd amgen o'u cysylltu nhw. Mi gyfeis i sicrwydd bod cama yn cael eu cymryd, ond all y prif yn unig roi sicrwydd i ni ynglyn â be yn union si yn, neu wedi bod yn digwydd i adnabod y llefydd hynny, fe bod neb yn gorfod aros tan ddiwedd yr rhaglen cyflymu Cymru cyn darganfod i bod nhw wedi colli allan. Ie, i'r bobl yna ar busnes yna bydd rhaid ystyried rhywbeth i'r ell o sicrhau band eang sydd ddim yn defnyddio cablau'r um, telefon i hunan. Uh, un modd o wneud hynny wrth gwrs yw defnyddio lloeren, uh, falle defnyddio os uh, mae er enghraifft 4G ar gael yn yr ardal, ffyrdd o sicrhau bod band eang ar gael yn y ffordd hynny, ond mi wedi dweud bod bydd y, bydd y, y tai hyn ar bobl hyn ddim yn, yn gallu cael ei gyrraedd gan uh, y system o, o, uh, o linellau o gablau uh, uh, telefon. Y mae yna ffyrdd i'r eithlyn i'n ystyried yr hyn o bryd er mwyn helpu nhw. William Graham. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. Uh, First Minister, I'm sure, like me, you'll welcome the advances made with the super-connected city scheme in both Newport and Cardiff. Uh, key element, of course, are the connection vouchers provided financial support from the United Kingdom government. But in terms of areas like rural Monmouthshire, which have poor connection, and uh, a village between here and uh, Newport, not nine miles from this building, also has very poor connection. What initiative are you going to use to promote some independent companies such as Spectrum Internet for their innovative use of technology to connect what are presently not spots? Well, I would expect that uh, the vast majority of uh, settlements and indeed um, houses and businesses will be connected as a result of Superfast Cymru. Uh, and uh, that is, of course, uh, a scheme, uh, as a member will know, that we're rolling out towards uh, the middle of next uh, year. Uh, without that scheme, of course, it's right to say the market would not deli deliver uh, broadband to large swathes of Wales outside of the M4 corridor and across the A55. Uh, so what I would say to people who are uh, not able to access uh, superfast broadband at this moment in time is that uh, we expect them to be able to do so by the completion of the Superfast Cymru programme. Peter Black. Thank you, Mr. Officer. First Minister, can I draw your attention to a particular problem in my region, the village of Jersey Marine? They were promised super, um, fast broadband by March 2015. <coughs> um, they were then promised again by July 2015. The latest um, um, uh, update is the cabinet has been installed six, for six months, but they still have not got it because there appears to be a problem getting their cables across a railway line which has been there since 1890. This doesn't um, all, all go well for the planning and the process of, of BT or or their contractors. Um, one constituent contacted me who says he's a home-based worker, seriously disadvantaged by poor broadband with only one megabyte, cannot take part in video conferences nor share virtual desktops. What solution would you propose for, for people in Jersey Marine who requi require this super fast broadband and are not able to access it? Uh, well, clearly, uh, it, there is a, it, is a, it is planned for them to be able to access super fast broadband. But if I could write to the member with uh, further details, um, perhaps then we could uh, investigate what the problem has been and also to provide uh, a more secure date in the future for uh, those who have contacted him. Kirsty Williams. Uh, First Minister, fast and reliable broadband is crucial to the economy of Brecon and Radnorshire, as is certainty from open reach as to when those businesses will have the services. Now, in cases like Llanothol, the programme, they've been dropped down the programme uh, by literally a year. And currently, at the moment, uh, confirmed by open reach, their website is sending messages saying that the Cabinet isn't currently in the plan to be upgraded as part of the programme, when actually it is in the programme uh, to be upgraded. Surely we could have expected better from the significant amount of taxpayers' money that has been invested in this scheme on behalf of the Welsh Government, but better service should, have been expect, should be expected. Well, well, again, if I could write to the member uh, with regard to the particular issue in uh, Llanorthol, uh, I'll uh, make sure that's investigated and uh, a full answer provided. Question six, Lindsay Whittle. Uh, so oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. In front of myself, question five, Jenny Rathbone. Deal. <laughs> Uh, what discussions has, has the First Minister had with the UK Government about the Welsh Government's ability to implement a postgraduate loan scheme for the next 
academic year? Well, the Minister for Education and Skills wrote to the Minister of State for Universities and Science to express his concern that the Student Loans Company cannot implement the scheme for Wales for 2016 to 17 because England is being prioritised. That is wholly unacceptable. Well, I agree, First Minister, that I've had many correspondents very concerned that they are, uh, it, this is discriminating both against Welsh students and Welsh universities who rely on postgraduate schemes to help us fuel the economy. So what discussions has your government had with the student loans company which allows them to discriminate so blatantly in favour of one part of the UK over another? Well, they're doing it, um, despite the fact that ministers are uh, there to uh, keep control over them. The student loan, student loan company is there to serve four nations and four governments, but it seems that the UK government on this occasion thinks it's acting as an English government and is discriminating, as the member has rightly said, against those in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. We are exploring how we uh, might be able to uh, move this forward ourselves, but it's another example uh, where, bluntly, those in Whitehall don't know uh, exactly who they're meant to be serving. Angela Burns. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm sure, First Minister, you will understand the importance of postgraduate study and how crucial it is that a support system is in place to help those students. But, however, I was shocked last week to hear the Minister for Education's wholesale dismissal of higher education sector's funding concerns, referring to these concerns as special pleadings. First Minister, would you agree with your Education Minister on that one? Well, this question is about postgraduate loans, so let me return to that. I, I notice that the uh, Conservative uh, member uh, does nothing to uh, protest against her own government's deliberate decision to discriminate against students from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It is appalling that the student loans company sees itself as prioritising only England and not the four nations of the UK. And it is to the Conservative Party's shame that once again they fail to stand up for Wales. Simon Thomas. Diolch Llywydd, uh, welcome to the hwn, of course, you bod Pifas Gorion yn Lloegr yn fwy deniadol i gwaddau digion i astudio ymchwil na Pifas Gorion yng Nghymru. A gall hwnna bod uh, uh, costi gymaint y 10 miliwn o binoedd i Bifysgol yn Angymru a ben y tofiadau i chi eisoes wedi fwy uh, i'r cyngor cyllido a ddisgiwch. I chi'n cyn iawn i bai o'r uh, Llywodraeth San Stefan am hyn ac dwi'n fanu y beniadaeth yna dylo hwn fod o gael i bawb, ond beth y chi'n naid fel Llywodraeth i sicrhau fod cynllun benthig y gyfer y studio ôl gadd i gael yng Nghymru mor fi yn ac sy'n bosib. Gael yeah. ddweud wrth yr aelod. Dwi ddim yn effeithio prif ysgolion Cymru, yn effeithio myfyrwyr o Gymru, ac bydd myfyrwyr o Loegr yn gallu cael y gefnogaeth i ddod i Gymru i ystudio. Uh, so felly, nebydd yw'r problem, nid rwydd yw'r prif ysgolion yw, ond, ond uh, problem yw'n a, a myfyrwyr. Ond, cyd hyn yn hollol, uh, dwi ddim yn rhywbeth sydd yn dderbyniol, a ni wedi sgwennu yn barod, a byddwn ni'n para, para i bwyso i ddweud dwi ddim yn dderbyniol. Felly, mae gyda chi corff sy'n fod i weithredu dros y dyn sy'n ddim gyfan gwbl, gyfan gwbl, bod yw'r corff yna ddim yn gweithredu dros bobl o'r Alban, Cymru a gogledd Iwerddon. A problem yw hwn i ddim cwmni, problem yw hwn gan wyn i dogion yn uh, San Stefan sy'n ddim yn, uh, yn derbyn bod hwn yn rhywbeth sydd yn ffeithio y gwleidydd eraill yn y dynas unedig ac yn blaen o'r eithi Lloegr. Now question six, Lindsay Whittle. Uh, certainly keep me on my toes. Uh, First Minister, uh, what is the Welsh Government's 10-year strategy uh, for Cardiff Airport, please? Yes, our focus uh, on Cardiff Airport uh, is that it should become the airport of choice for Wales, commercially successful and an even more powerful driver of jobs and growth in the wider economy. Uh, First Minister, thank you for your answer. Uh, as a former Mid Glamorgan County Councillor from 1977, I'm pleased that the airport, in fact, is back in uh, public ownership. But uh, last month, uh, a report from the Public Policy, Policy Institute for Wales on the airports uh, said, and I quote, insufficient resources have been committed to marketing and Visit Wales recently have been criticised for spending less than the equivalent bodies in the UK. So what can the Welsh Government do to attract increased use uh, to Cardiff Airport by visitors from outside of the UK and from within the UK? Well, I, I look at the figures is what I'd say. We know that, uh, for example, compared to January last year, the figures are 42% up. For last month, it was 56% up. Uh, the airport is uh, recovering from the six years of neglect it had under its previous private uh, owners. 
Uh, we expect to see more airlines coming to the airport in, uh, in the future, and uh, it shows that with the commitment uh, that is shown by government, it is possible to turn an airport around, just as Scotland has done. Uh, with Prestwick, just indeed as local government does in England, because local government owns Manchester Airport and Stansted Airport as well, uh, for that matter. And uh, you know, we're pleased to see that the airport is moving in the right direction, uh, pleased to see that more and more passengers are using the airport, uh, and it shows that the decision that we took to buy the airport was indeed the right one. May Cantonou. First Minister, the steps taken by the Welsh Government to take on the airport, to save the airport, uh, has not only been a success, it's seen a massive rise in passenger numbers. But do you not agree with me that it is absolutely shameful that the Welsh Conservative Party are doing everything they can to undermine the airport and had they been in government, do you agree with me, they would have abandoned the airport and by now the airport would be shut yeah. and if that was the consequence, yeah. how many jobs, how many jobs would the Tories have thrown away because of their failure to stand up for a Welsh economic lever and institution. They would have thrown away 1,700 jobs. That's what they would have done. As I've said to them before, when we spoke, oh, it hurts, I know, and you like to cry out order, a lot. Order, but it, the order. reality of the situation is this. The company that owned the airport in a meeting with me said quite frankly to me that they expected the airport to decline and close. They were not interested in selling it to another private buyer. They were interested in selling it to us as a government. They were not interested in working with us on route development. They made that clear. We took the airport over. We saved those jobs. The airport is growing. There are more people using the airport. The Welsh Conservatives would have seen that runway turn to grass. The airport closed. British Airways maintenance closed, all because of a narrow ideological problem that they had with public ownership. We take the view that the airport is an economic driver. We're seeing more passengers, more people employed there, and it is right that that airport is in public ownership and prospering, not the disaster it would have been if the Tories had been in charge. William Graham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I quote from the Auditor General's report, First Minister, the Welsh Government did not prepare a formal benefits rationalisation plan as part of its business case for purchasing the airport. Can this be one of the reasons why you managed to pay twice the market value? And could you go on to identify how these potential benefits from the acquisition and manage them after purchase to ensure that they will be delivered? £472 million pounds is a contribution to the economy. It's odd, isn't it? Because when the airport was uh, bought, one Conservative member, Mohamed Asghar, welcomed it. Yeah. Welcomed it on Twitter. Yes. Uh, and then was forced to take it down. Apparently, he was being ironic. <laughs> ironic. But there we are. I mean, it shows he follows orders, just like the, uh, just like the rest of them. Um, the reality is that the original owners wanted £200 million pounds for the airport. £200 million. We paid £52 million after an independent valuation and we got the airport. That's why it is prospering. It's why it's having investment put into it. It had nothing for years. The infrastructure was crumbling. There were windows cracked. There were airlines that were leaving the airport in 2007 to 2.1 million passengers. By 2013, 1.07 million passengers. That was the success of the company that ran the airport under private ownership. Now we're seeing huge increases in passengers because the Welsh government ensured that the people who work there and the people who use it would not be let down. Mike Hedges. First Minister, do you agree with me that the progress made uh, at Cardiff Airport so far has been excellent? And is it not better for Wales and the Welsh economy to have a successful airport rather than what the alternative would be to have lots of new houses being built in Roost? So, well, I mean, the Conservatives wouldn't care about that. Um, as long as there's no uh, chance of there being any element of public ownership, they'd rather have seen the airport closed, which is exactly what would have happened. A major employer in the Vale of Glamorgan. Uh, that would have been lost to the people of the Vale of Glamorgan and to Wales. We know that when it comes to the Tories, they are best at destroying jobs, not at creating them. Question seven, Russell George. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on traffic management issues in Montgomeryshire? Yes, we are progressing a number of schemes to address different traffic management issues. For example, the A483 and A489 Newtown Bypass will help immensely to alleviate traffic issues uh, in the members' constituency. Uh, thank you, First Minister. I do have concerns about the traffic management implications surrounding the movement of turbine components for the Teen Gwynt and Gareth Lewid wind farms. Uh, I'm concerned that the general travelling public, including tourists, should not be uh, disadvantaged more than is necessary. 
Uh, you have mentioned the Newtown Bypass, which will, of course is very welcome, but will not be in place uh, during the construction of these wind farms. Therefore, can I ask you to compel uh, officials to ensure that the movement of these turbine components are not allowed to take place during peak times um, during and um, uh, in connection with the, the wind farms I've mentioned? Oh, well, I can assure the member that officials are doing just that, uh, working with the developers to ensure that the movement of large components takes place outside of peak traffic, uh, obviously to minimise any disruption on the roads. William Powell. <coughs> First Minister, as you know, the Dovey Bridge uh, is uh, an absolutely crucial uh, element of traffic management in northwest Montgomery and also um, forms a, a key arterial route. Uh, and in the context of, uh, of its importance, uh, it's particularly a matter of pride for us uh, within the Welsh Liberal Democrats that we were able to secure from the Welsh Government a firm commitment to creating uh, a second uh, Dovey crossing uh, in the uh, in the next couple of years. Um, in the context of recent problems, uh, First Minister, that have been with flooding and damage to the existing road, will you join uh, your, um, your colleague, the Minister for Transport, in reassuring the local community uh, in Mahuntleth and surrounding area that this project will be expedited given the, the many benefits that will flow from its delivery? Oh, I can assure the member that the project will be moved forward as quickly as possible. Uh, there are many of us who are familiar with, uh, with the Dubby Bridge, uh, it, the, the crucial connection between Powys and Gwynedd, uh, and a crucial uh, part of our, um, of our road uh, network. Uh, we know the bridge itself uh, is quite low uh, over the river. It is prone to flooding, uh, and we are moving ahead with the project as quickly as possible. Question 8, Christine Chapman. Uh, will the First Minister provide an update on the duelling of the A465 Heads of the Valleys Road? Yes, we've already completed the duelling of sections 1, 3 and 4. Section 2 between Gilwan and Bryn Mawr is on site. That will be completed by 2018. Uh, the final two, section 5, uh, Dowlice to the A470 and section 6 to the A470 to the Hirwine, are scheduled for completion by 2020. First Minister, I was very pleased to, uh, to get that response to my letter from the Economy Minister confirming uh, the overall uh, duelling project being completed in 2020, and obviously this has be very much been welcomed by my constituents. I do want to press you further today, though, about the proposed uh, junction locations, particularly as they affect uh, Hirwine and access to the Kenan Valley. Uh, there was some concern at a public ex exhibition that the plans on display uh, don't take account of recent property developments elements. What guarantees can you give that any plans will take these comments on board so that the needs of uh, local communities are met and the, uh, the dual road seamlessly connects with wider transport networks? I, I can give assurance to my, to my uh, friend the member for Cannon Valley that there will be full engagement with the public and with stakeholders throughout the design phase uh, of the uh, road itself. It's important that we are able to inform the design of the road as it moves uh, forward. Uh, there will be an opportunity to comment formally on the draft statutory orders and the environmental proposals when the draft orders are published. We do anticipate that a public local inquiry will be required in spring of 2017 in front of an independent uh, inspector. Uh, and I can confirm to her that the location and nature of the junctions along the route is a key element of the design review that's currently being undertaken. Nick Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, First Minister, it's good to see work progressing on the duelling of the Clitter Gorge section of the A465 between Gilder and Bryn Mawr, the, the section two of the road that you referred to. But there have been some issues of concern. I've been contacted by uh, a number of constituents with properties along the route which have not been compulsory purchased, but nonetheless have been devalued by the project. Uh, what discussions has the Welsh Government had with people finding themselves in this position, and how are you ensuring that those all those adversely affected uh, by construction are adequately compensated? Uh, well, I mean, it, we uh, take the view that those who are affected will be uh, adequately uh, compensated. Uh, it's right to say, of course, that um, there may be some people who find themselves a little closer to the road than was previously the case. Uh, that's unavoidable, uh, but it is right that they should be uh, compensated for that uh, loss of immunity, and we believe that that is, uh, is happening uh, on a fair basis. Question nine, Mike Hedges. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on Flying Start provision? Yes, Flying Start is one of our top commitments. It improves outcomes for children and their families, and we exceeded our target at double the number of children benefiting from Flying Start a year early, supporting more than 37,000 children across Wales. 
Well, the success of it in Swansea was highlighted to the Education Minister last week when he visited uh, two schools in my constituency where the head teachers were very keen to point out how very helpful Flying Start was for children pre-nursery and how the transition to inter-nursery education was so much easier when children had gone through uh, flying, fl flying Start. Uh, will the First Minister commit to the continuation of Flying Start? Is that, and is that just a, another example of the Tories for the rich, Labour for the rest? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I mean, we only, well, we only saw that uh, earlier on uh, today, and uh, with the court judgment last week, it uh, should, goes to prove exactly where the, the Tories lie in terms of uh, those who wish they, they want to support. It is socialism. Yeah, you're right. I'm quite happy to, to bring that out. It is looking after those who need help most is part of what we stand for as a party. If that's socialism, we all believe in that. So tough luck if the leader of the opposition doesn't actually believe in it. We will continue with Flying Start, as the member rightly says, it has helped many, many thousands of people and we as a government are proud of what it's achieved. Jonathan Saunders. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and to the First Minister, Welsh Conservatives do fully support the principle of Flying Start. However, the recent Wave 1 report highlighted that the level of awareness for families uh, awareness to the entitlements was very much dependent on the information provided to them by their health visitor and clearly the relationship between a health visitor and these families is very key here um, and it's very dependent on that uh, where there isn't a health visitor available uh, many are now missing out on this scheme. How are you working as a Welsh Government to address the, the failings that have been highlighted in the Wave 1 report? Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear what the uh, member said about supporting Flying Start, uh, even though uh, this is an area that's due for a 20% cut, according to our own party. So uh, there we are. Um, that is something that they will have to resolve uh, themselves, although, uh, as the Leader of the Opposition put it, they haven't crunched the numbers yet, which is what he said uh, on the uh, leaders' debate we had on the Sunday uh, politics, and I challenged him on where his, uh, his figures were coming from. There we are. Well, each local authority is able to apply a degree of flexibility within the Flying Start programme by offering support through outreach, we know that outreach enables families living outside Flying Start areas to access the support that they need. And using local knowledge and a robust assessment of priority, local authorities can ensure that those most in need receive this service. And finally, Liam Wood. Thank you for your answer then on flexibility, First Minister, because I've got a constituent in the Rhondda who has to pay £20 a week for her child to attend the local Flying Start scheme because she lives across the road from the catchment area. Now she fears that the lack of, of money will force her to stop sending her daughter to that scheme, which would be a real shame because her daughter's doing very well there. What flexibility is within the scheme to allow my constituent to access a free place for her child? Well, at the moment, of course, uh, the scheme is geographically targeted. Uh, nevertheless, uh, one of the issues that we will uh, deal with over the course of the next few months is whether it should continue to be geographically targeted or targeted in another way. Uh, those are matters, no doubt, that will <laughs> come out over the course of the next few months between now and May. Thank you, First Minister. We now move to item two, which is a business.